Hey guys, welcome to the shop. It is first thing in the morning for me here. Bright and early. Sun's not even up yet. Haven't touched this truck since last week's video. So there is still a ton left on this thing that I want to do. A lot that I got planned. So it's cold in here. I want to get a fire first. But then let's get started on this old square body. See how much progress we can make. I'm excited. Thanks for watching. An intro complete. Okay, so I have fit the door to the truck. It's just an empty shell right now. We we're fitting this outer skin, making sure that it is where it needs to be. And it's simply held on by the magnets along the seam and the clinkos in my little holes that I drilled. So we got it, got it hung. Our body lines aren't great, but they're as good as they're going to be. And they're as good as they were originally. And making sure that the skin is indeed fitting to what I did previously with my you know, rockers and cab corners and my body lines of the truck that I never touched. And it's about as good as it's going to be. It is a little looser down in the, this uh, corner than it is up front. But you know, that's just the way it's going to have to be, I guess. There's not a lot I can do about it. And this is not a show truck, but I do want it nice. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way that that fits. So now I can make it permanent. I guess. Those are awesome. So here's the one trick professional body men don't want you to know. And that is you, you can use jigs like this piece of wood to hold this body line straight because I cut away all the sheet metal and now it's flimsy. I'm holding it in line nice and straight with this two before that I've got wood screwed to the door frame itself so when I'm done and I get this skin on here, you know, I don't flex the door in and get a belly in it. Plus, I can remove this out of this hole here when I'm finished. It's not really a trick, more of a tip that uh, my brother showed me. So I thought that was neat, and it definitely helped because this door was pretty flimsy right through this area. And that will hold it in line so I get a good job. So originally in the doors of these old trucks, there was no soundproofing material, and they were pretty loud like riding around in a drum. So what I'm going to do while I've got this skin off of this and I've got as good access as I'll ever have, I'm going to be sticking a few sheets of this stuff on the inside of these doors before I put the skin on there. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. And uh, I, I picked this stuff up off Amazon. It's called Matte 66. This is the 80 mil thickness. Some of the cheapest stuff that they had, really. And... Uh, Hopefully, it'll make this thing a little quieter. So I think I got everything ready to bond that panel to this door frame. Now what I'm going to be using is this 3M08115 epoxy panel bonding adhesive is what it's specified as. They're proud of it. So I'm going to get set up, get my little nozzle on here, and then we'll start putting some of this stuff down. So because I'd never used this epoxy before, I really looked into it pretty thorough before I decided that that's what I was going to use to hold this seam right in the middle of my door together with. But this stuff has got a really good track record. A lot of your modern cars, some of the panels on them are held in place simply by epoxy. 
And, you know, they've thought of almost everything. This stuff's got glass beads in it, so you can't overclamp the joint and squeeze out all of the epoxy uh, to assure that you get a good bond. You know, and they recommend that you wet both surfaces. There's a lot of little stuff that, you know, you could need to do b to assure that you get a good bond, but you know, this stuff is really impressive, in my opinion. So I'm sure some of you are wondering why I didn't run a weld bead down this door seam and just attach the door skin that way, or, you know, just let it in. And the reason why is because it, both of those involve a ton of heat, and thin metal and heat usually don't go hand in hand if you're trying to get something straight in the end. So I think for this application, the epoxy was really the best bet to go with, simply because there is no heat involved, and you end up with a panel when it's but the epoxy's cured, that's as straight as it was before you done anything to it. So that's the reason. It is to reduce work down the road. So last week I mentioned that we had a crack in the frame back here on the passenger side, right at the top of this shock absorber, and it almost runs completely across this top web of the frame. If you squint real hard, you may be able to see it from there, but I'll bring you in a little closer. I know eyes ain't what they used to be, neither are mine. So we need to clean that out, weld that up, inspect the other side as well. We're not gonna hook these shocks back up. In fact, you know, here soon, we're just gonna drop this whole axle shocks, springs, and push them outside. They'll probably never be cleaned up and replace them with, their, uh, with the extra set of axles and springs that we got. So let's pull this off of here, clean this up, repair that, and maybe inspect the other side for cracks as well because it was really common for this to happen. All right, so look right above that bolt there. You can see that crack runs all the way to there. It had almost made it completely across the top of that frame. Not good. So let's pull the shock off, see if we can't get that fixed. This probably won't come loose. No, I don't feel like breaking my hand. Let me... shocked that that's coming off. Get off there. <laughs> Can't be frozen solid if it's liquid. wasn't made like I thought it was. Hold that right there. Okay. Wow, that's not good. Not good at all. It's a lot worse than I thought. Yeah, no surprise, I guess. Three cracks. We got a crack that runs almost all the way across the top, one that runs out this way to about there, and then one that runs out this way to about right there. And what causes this, you know, like I've mentioned, I've seen this before, is that this bolt gets loose. And for a hundred years, it gets driven with that shock bolt just racking around in this hole. It wallows it out and breaks the frame. So we will, uh, we will clean this up, weld up these spots, and maybe even put a little patch panel there to give it a little strength. See how bad that is? Mm -hmm. See that crack that runs almost all the way across the top? And look at these. There's a crack there. And right there. So that's all going to have to be cut out those cracks and welded up. And then I'll put a little support plate behind there. Give it a little backbone. I will that. Mm-hmm.
Oh, I'm sure it's not. It's quite the same. I don't see any cracks. There's no obvious ones, but it probably is. They all did this. Nothing, nothing strange about this one being cracked. that one there mm -hmm. and there that I didn't see so that dye penetrant kit for checking for cracks is well worth its money I would have missed this crack here this one here and this one had I not checked it now I thought that this crack stopped right here but actually it's spider webbed off into two so we're gonna drill a hole there there and right there you know fix the whole thing while we're at it so those are super simple to use, that kit. Anyone can do that. So good kit to have. So check out this magnetic, that kind of adjustable welding backer. It's got a copper pad on it. Copper's not the best thing to back up a weld with, but pretty nice. You don't want to blow through, so you just magnetically stick it on the back and it gives you a, gives you a backer, so you're not spitting wire through the hole. Pretty neat. Hear my hair sizzling. Huh? Did it? You bald. Oh. It was sizzling. I could hear it and I could smell it as well. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it's right there. Where it was right there. Right in there. See if it's sizzling. <laughs> That's okay. Got enough. I got extra. I know. It's going to not be good. You need to get it down on your forehead. I just. good right, here's this let me get you set up here so you don't blow through this guy okay so just start back here just like that and you got to make that noise while you do it yeah all right use both hands like this yeah. Should I not or just, my legs like no, that? just get just get comfortable. Yeah. There you go. Lean your yeah. There you go. Just like that. But use both both hands. Like this. Or should I have one down? Oh. Whatever you feel most comfortable doing. Want to get high or something? Yeah. N no. Just start start back here a little bit. Bes yep. Start outside of the cut and then work your way up. Yep, kind of. I did it. You did it, except for you got to pull the trigger now. A little slower. A little, a little slower on your travel. Your side to side was great. Just keep going. Slower going down? Slower this way. You were fine side to side. Just start, start back there where you did. Right here? Yep. Get it closer. There you go. Yeah, there. Yep. Keep that right there. Yep. Just like you're doing. Alright. 
Very nice. I did it! You did it. That will work. That will work. I'll just fill in this little spot here and then size my hole. I'll grind it down, yeah. Looks good. Good job. So now that this epoxy's had time to set up, we are not at full strength yet. We've been a little bit down on temperature. But what I, I can take off these magnets now. They're not required to hold this in place. The epoxy will do the job. But what I'm concerned is that everywhere one of my magnets are, I'm gonna have a little ripple in this door that I'm gonna have to work out. It's not gonna be a big deal. But every so often, the whole during the whole day yesterday, I would twist these magnets or scoot them down a little bit, just kind of try to keep them just moving, right? And I'm hoping that that kind of equalized some of the waves. We'll see. We'll see what kind of job I got, right? See if this worked. So that turned out amazingly well. Much better than I expected it to. I expected quite a bit of heavy ripples down through here. But what I did is I shifted those magnets around a little bit and maybe while that, you know, while that epoxy was still malleable and maybe that equalized out some of the wave that I would have had otherwise. If I would have used pop rivets, you know, you know what I would have got, you know, the old washboard or sheet metal screws. I mean, it's not perfect. Obviously there is some, but it looks amazing. Maybe just a heavy primer would get the ripple that I put in this thing out. So I'm super stoked with the way that that process worked out. And uh, I think if a bunch of small rare earth bar magnets would be ideal, um, put some release agent on them. Um, so yeah, you know, if you've got a similar process that needs done, consider it. It worked amazing. Could have used the Clecos and some uh, release agent on them through here. But then again, you would still be limited to just where your hole's at. And you'd had a bunch of holes to fill. So, I don't know, magnets worked excellent. Super, super pleased with it. And who really does work this hard to get a straight door? I mean, like it really, you know, who cares? I do, I really do. So here's the old tired cab and radiator mounts that I pulled off of this old truck. Pretty bad shape, really. It should ride a lot better. It should make the cab feel like it's really connected to the frame with these new polyurethane mounts that I put under there. I didn't show that, but just trust me, I did. Also replaced the uh, bolts as well because they were pretty rotten. So that'll be dot. That'll be nice because it'll actually make the truck feel like it's connected to the road instead of the cab swaying, you know, and the radiator support shaking. Makes a huge difference. They're a pain in the butt to replace, I'll be honest, but I think it's probably gonna be worth it.
split that right there or else that's going to give me a little kink I think. Relieve it a bit. Elizabeth. That means come outside. I need something. So this is a really nice straight skin. It does have some spots in it and obviously it's going to have to be worked but check that out. Hopefully you can see that into the window kind of the, how straight that uh, skin is. Now here's a little tip in case you want one. When you roll these lips around take your time. Don't just get crazy with a hammer because I know it's easy to do and I like to progressively roll these lips you know, in. I'll work at one, one end and I'll go down then I'll go back. That way I get a nice straight jam and I don't beat the outer skin to death because you're not going to save any time you know, rolling that lip around heavy and then cause a bunch of dents in here that you have to work out later. So keep that in mind. Now, I've worked at body shops where you're working at, on commission and there's not a lot of time to roll those lips around if you want to make a dollar, you know, if you don't want to starve to death. And in that case, as long as Mrs. Smith or whoever the car's for, Mr. Smith, is happy with the job, it was a success. But if you're doing it for yourself and you want to take that next step to the next level, that's what that hand motion was, uh, was uh, representing. Take your time. Don't get carried away. Just roll them around easy and you'll get a better outcome. Put your tape down, keep your dolly out on the edge and not flat on the face. Trust me, it works. Boy, the eye went up in these. <laughs> yeah, please. I'm going to have to patch that up. That's just a hole, I guess. I don't know what it was for originally. Uh, this truck, I think, was automatic unless they changed the steering column. Go ahead and take it out. I stuck that in there. You did? Yeah, to keep the uh, keep the wind out. Like, um... Yeah, that looks like an original to me. Yeah. So what I'm going to have to do is make a patch plate for that. Um, and I probably, I guess I could make it, I don't know, it's a little rough. that floor there, didn't yeah. I?
just swipe it out in there. that didn't they they didn't care they just wanted a transmission in it I'm sure I found a lucky penny to scrape this one Scrapalizing? <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? I'm getting the tar off. Tar, tar, how do you say it? Tar? Tar? your eyes. Not sizzling. <laughs> I bet one did my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, guys, that's it this week. And I'm really, really impressed with the way that, that epoxy worked. And, you know, I don't know if it could turn out much better, to be honest. It's always going to, there's always going to be some body work involved with a, a, you know, a door skin replacement. But, uh, you know, I think this minimized the amount of body filler that it's going to take. Got the rear of the frame cleaned up, got the axle out, and uh, big plans for next week. So that's it, I guess. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and you know anybody who's helped us out whatsoever. It is much appreciated. You can believe that. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower.